All right, everybody. We back. Another episode of Negro News. Got my boy Kareem again, USC alumni. Uh, just give you guys a little, uh, you know, tutorial of, of who my guy is. Show you a couple of clips. Remains the running back. And Palmer stands on a quick drop. Goes to Kareem Kelly. He's at mid. All right. That, that's one. My back, Kareem. Um, yeah, so... Uh, just to let you know, he is he is who he is. Into the running back, and Palmer stands on a quick drop, goes to Kareem Kelly. He's at midfield. It'll be another first down. Yeah, just give you a little quick, quick, quick little brief clip, man. My back, Kareem. I'm gonna do a better job next time, man. We had another brother from his team that was supposed to be here today, tonight actually, but uh, I think he's uh out of commission right now he might pop in hey did you uh shoot him the uh the link and tell him just 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 shoot him the link and text him and be like yo do this we on now if he pops yeah. in that's great i hit him up already um i sent the link like earlier today he responded with okay um i gave him the time and everything but he does have some uh some prior engagements going on so I knew it was probably going to be a, a 50 50 chance, but we can Good definitely, game, we definitely got to get them on next week because I want everything to tie in to what Marshawn Lynch was saying previously with this interview with uh club Shay Shay. All right. So look, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going to touch on that. Hold on. So here we go. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I didn't, like I didn't, I didn't fuck with him. You feel what I'm saying? So you didn't mess with who? I didn't fuck with with Pete. Uh -huh. And then I mean, you know, Russ was like just a quarterback for me. Right. Yeah, you know I mean. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So he said he didn't mess with Pete. It's real funny that he says that. Like, and I say that sarcastically. Because prior to Pete even going to the NFL and being on that level of of politics and, and bureaucracy. He was at SC first. Um, I got a first hand experience with a lot of uh with a lot of instances that Marshawn mentioned in his interview with uh with Shannon Sharp. But before I before I go any further, I just want to tell you, yourself and the people that um, it's a lot to the story beyond what you're going to hear from me tonight. I'm just going to give you bits and pieces to kind of like have an idea and an understanding as to uh, who we dealing with and what we're dealing with. All right. So my thing is my, what I'm wondering to know is why now and what was what do you think his ulterior motive for doing some of the things that he's done even though we haven't touched him yet what do you i mean like what, what was his motive is that is that his character or he had a hidden agenda to benefit himself or he was just that malicious of a person of a coach he's just a very i'll say vindictive selfish uh pompous individual i mean he's a great coach i'm not here to take away you know all the attributes and the fact that he's a great coach but as a person he's he's a shitty person he's a fucked up person you know he may he may create the narrative like he's this great guy you know he galvanizes his players he gets everybody upbeat he's active he's running around and all this and that he's that but he also has another side to him that the public and a lot of people don't know nor have seen and that's for the athlete to uh divulge in regards to their experience and i'm here to talk about mine but not so much in depth but just you know some surface stuff so 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 me knowing you and for the viewers out there who don't know 
Uh, this is my boy Kareem Kelly. He was a wide receiver under uh, Pete Carroll's um, coaching. And your accolades, your, your, from a statistical standpoint, would you say that they were good enough to go higher than what you were, were, were drafted? Oh, for sure. And he played a part in that. He played that, a that's part. Right. Okay. He played such a huge part in where I got drafted because he felt the need to throw me under the bus and to tell scouts, general managers, disparaging things that just wasn't true. And it's like this here, man. I wasn't considered one of Pete Carroll's guys because he came in my junior year. So yeah, I was part of, I was already part of a different regime. And I don't know if athletes out there know, but when coaches staff turn over and when there's new coaches staff that go to new schools, most of the time they bring in their own guys, whether that's their own guys that they know or their own guys that they recruit. But most of the time, new coaching staffs bring in their own guys. So I wasn't one of Pete Carroll's guys when he came in. But at the same time, he had to play me and he had to respect me enough to put me on the field because I made a difference. But had I not been the type of player that I was, he would have done me like he done some of the other players, which was put him so far down the bench and make it so difficult for them to to get a look or get drafted all because of his ego, um, his selfishness and his, and his pompous, arrogant behavior. If you didn't do things, if you didn't do things the way he wanted it to be done, and I'm not talking about on the field, I'm talking about off the field. If you didn't do things that he wanted, and I'll use this example, when I say that, I mean like he came to me one day and he asked me, and this is my senior year, he asked me if I had an agent. And during that time, I, I wasn't signed with an agent, but I was, you know, I was talking to agents, but I wasn't signed. So he wanted to refer me to one of his guys, but I really wasn't feeling that. And when he's seen and when I when I convey to him like, nah, you know, I'm a pass. Um, to me, he seemed bothered by it, but I didn't think nothing of it. You know, I'm a, I'm a young I'm a young man, so I didn't really I didn't really read into it. But fast forward and looking back all in the same breath, because I didn't do what he wanted me to do, which was go with a guy that he wanted me to go with as far as the agency is concerned. He felt the need to then throw me under the bus and speak disparaging things about me to agents, to uh, league officials, to general managers, to scouts. And that's just that's just one thing that he did. Like I which, said, which which which, which 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 I'm going to cut you off, my brother. Um, so I guess it's safe to say that he impacted your life dramatically yeah man i mean look your earning like potential said, your earning potential your stocks your name image and likeness right right he he, is, he assassinated your character essentially he really did uh so stop moving the camera like i said before um i don't like to play victim but since, like this is a topic that we're gonna discuss so I'm going to put it all out there. But, yeah, he had a huge impact on all those things you just named off. Uh, so he told he told a lot of NFL officials that I was a gangbanger and that he didn't think that I should go as high as I was projected to go in the draft because he said I was immature, uh, I, was a, I was a selfish – I was a selfish uh, teammate, um, which is a lie, and that I hung out with 
known gang members, which is also a lie. And the well, first that, line, no, hold on, hold on. Wasn't the majority of his football team gang affiliated in some? In some, you're in South Central. You're in, you're in the heart of Southern California. You're down off a of figure on Figueroa. What did he think? Yeah, I mean, one can ask that question, but he wanted to use that to make it a bad mark on my name. So, and where is he from? How convenient. What's uh, that? Where, where is he from originally? Um, I think he's from the East Coast. I'm not sure exactly which state, but I think. Well, well from- how does he know about gang politics if he's not associated? Well, you know, coaches, man, they got people in high places, man. They got eyes everywhere, bro. So, you know, if they see you hanging out with somebody who's from, you know, a local crew, a gang or or gang, they automatically assume that you are a gangbanger because of you having friends from high school or certain so certain associates they automatically tie you in with that and that's something that he did when it came to my uh situation and my draft status so and, the and first thing that, that i wasn't a, that i wasn't a uh that was i was a selfish teammate i beg to differ on that and i pushed back on that because i actually share time with an incoming freshman it ended up working out because Mike Williams had a, a fabulous freshman year in a, in, a, in a great career while he was at USC. But I chose to take the back seat without ruffling any feathers, shaking the boat. You know, I did it with a smile on my face because the ultimate goal was to win, to win and to go to a BCS bowl. Cause back then we had the BCS bowl. So, that that was the objective was to win. So I didn't I didn't make no qualms about it. I played my role, and it ended up biting me in the ass anyway. Because I I did that. I became a, a team player. Now, mind you, for the viewers, my first three years at SC, I was a leading receiver in all categories. My senior year, coming into my senior year, all that changed. You would think one might be upset, pouting, stirring shit up in the locker room, being a distraction, causing rifts. I did absolutely none of that. I shared time with a freshman. Did I like it? No. But like I said, we was doing what we was doing for for the ultimate goal, which was to go to a BCS Bowl. So for him to call me a, a, a selfish teammate, False man, it's a lie. Like that hurts. I know. I know that hurts, man. I know that hurts, man. I, I know how that feels, man. I know how that feels. So I'm not bitter about it, but it has to be put out there. Like what type of person he is, you know? And what Marshawn Lynch was talking about. So let me ask you this: When they were down on that one yard line, who throws the ball on the one yard line? mentioning the Seahawks game when they lost. That was the Super Bowl, wasn't it? That was the Super Bowl. Who does that? Pete Carroll. That's what I'm saying. This speaks to this arrogance, this pompous, this, you know, I'm the smartest person on the field mentality. That's his That's his mentality. That's his attitude. Like, I'm going to trump all common sense by throwing a, a slant route on a two yard line. Hold on, one yard line, and then all the analytics are out the window with that with, with that call right there because that was the analytics. That was not part of any analytics. That that had to be arrogant. You, I can't argue with you with that because they, they even have the coaches even have a card for analytics for for various scenarios, and I'm pretty sure that wasn't on the card. I'm I'm positive it wasn't on the card. I'm positive, uh, but again, that speaks to that man's character, man. They had an opportunity to to win a, a second Super Bowl, but because Russ was his darling, that he wanted Russ to win the MVP, and if Russ would have connected on that throw, he probably would have won MVP, 
And if and if he would have ran the ball with Marshawn Lynch and he would have scored, he would have won MVP. He didn't want. Well, you know he would have scored. You know he would have scored. He was going you know to score. Would have scored. And if he would have scored, Marshawn Lynch probably would have won the game, the Super Bowl MVP, because he he balled out. Pete didn't want that to happen. You got to hear what Marshawn did to him after that play. He said he ran to the sideline, found him, and laughed in the man's face. And went and then went directly to the locker room. He laughed in the man's face. Like you dumb motherfucker. Hey, and, and, and Marshawn, um, in, in that interview with Shannon Sharp, uh, much respect to Beast Mode, man. He carried that 3.2 GPA at Cal. And for, the, for those who don't understand, Cal is a Pac-12 school, but it's an Ivy League pretty much. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's up there with the Stanford's. The academia is high. It's high, but yeah, the academics is not get is, carried is, away. Upper echelon. Oh, you said don't get carried. Man, still uh, education from Cal. No, that's great. I mean, that coming from a USC guy. I, you know, what I'm saying I know it's more, it's more, it's more controversial. But I'm nah, man, saying. come on, I'm bro. Just saying. Crazy. I'm just saying. But yeah, man. Uh, I'm glad Marshawn actually came out and spoke on that, man. That was so refreshing to hear that because I don't have the type of platform that Marshawn Lynch has, obviously. So for, him to have that, so for him to have that platform and to speak about those things and his truth, man, that shit, that shit speaks volumes, bro. I just wish he would have, I wish he would have gave us more meat and potatoes though in reference to Pete. He got, he only can say so much, man. He don't want to get, you know, sued for defamation. You know, he only can speak to personal experiences and things that he actually did. You know, yeah, so. and Russell uh, uh, Russell Wilson seems like ever since he's gotten with Sierra, man, he just went. Kap- um, no, he was already that. He was held by one of the best defenses in NFL history. They carried him. The Legion of Boom. The Legion of Boom. They 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 covered up a lot of blemishes, bro. Cam Chester was a dog. A lot of them was, man. Straight up. That whole defense, bro. Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner, yeah. And then uh what's that other that other DB? He he I, I liked him, the, the life skin brother. He, the safety? He was, uh, yeah, it's the safety. Uh I forget. He got tra- traded in that towards ACL he later was on. Awesome too. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. No, exactly. Went to yeah. Texas. Yeah, he was he was great. Um, but da uh, Pete. So, is there a laundry list of players that he's done that to of what he's uh, what he done what he did to you? I wouldn't say a laundry list, but it's enough guys who has a, a lot of credibility who can speak on their own behalf, and hopefully we can get most of the guys who have personal experiences with Pete Carroll on the show so that they can tell their story. Because I don't want people to think like, oh, this dude's bitter. He just, you know, he just. Oh, well, that's to- going to come. That's coming. I mean, you're going to always and have a nature. Fine. And that's fine. But if that if what I'm saying is backed up with other people's story in there and all the stories coincide, this ain't about being bitter. This is about a man who held careers in his hands and chose to allow some careers to go south and some careers to go north what just based off his word like he has credibility pete carroll was in the nfl before he was in college he was oh yeah for sure he was in nfl and then he went he came to college and then he went back to the nfl so he's he has a good, a lot he's, of pool. He's, he's, he's in that country club he's in that he's in that good old boys club so mm-hmm. his his word means a lot carry weight he can affect draft status. And he did affect some guys' draft status. Me being one. You telling so, me, you tell wait, hold on, hold on, bro. Hold on. You telling me with my stats, with my with my career stats at SC, top five in most categories, you telling me that grants me a six round draft pick? Look at look, look at a lot of these dudes who's going second, third round. Look at their career numbers, bro. Not even close to mine. So if it's about the film, I got great film. 
If it's about the workout, my workout was good. So what else is it? It's the word of Pete Carroll that allowed. All right, all right. So this is what I want to know. What happened, man. How did you find out that he threw salt in the game? I'm going to tell you. So when I got drafted by the New Orleans Saints, you have like an introductory meeting with like coaches, staff, general manager, owner. When I sat down and had a meeting with them, they went over some things that Pete Carroll said. And they was like, we hope this is not true because we really want you to, you know, have a successful career here. We really want you to, you know, be here. And they told me the things that he said with the with the gang affiliation, with the mm. being a being a being a being a selfish player, a selfish teammate, you know, all these different things, man. And it's just like it hurt. It did, man, because I I said I set my pride to the side when it came down to the team. You know, I may not have gotten along with every single teammate, it, and nobody, no teammate gets along with every teammate. But you guys go to battle together, man. We go to battle together through training camp, th throughout the season. You know, we eat together. We go to meetings together. We do everything together. We're a brotherhood. So team has, has been a lot to me, and I came from a winning program. I came from a championship program, so I knew what it was like to win, and I knew what it was like to allow other people to shine and to sometimes take the back seat for the greater good. So selfish, hey, I've never been a selfish athlete. I've never been a selfish teammate. I've never cared about the numbers, bro. I cared about the wins. I came from a winning program, Long Beach Poly, one of the winningest uh, high school football programs in the country. What you talking about, selfish? So let me hold on. Let me ask honestly. Uh, had you gone with his agent that he recommended, do you think your draft stock would have been higher? Absolutely, bro. That's that's a no brainer. I think that had a lot to do with it. Do you regret that? No, I don't regret it because he wanted me to go with somebody that he wanted me to go with. Who's to say that this 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 guy would have represented me well? What if it was just a money grab? You get what I'm saying? I didn't I didn't build the relationship with that agent. I didn't know him. That's the thing with with signing with an agent. You have to build a relationship. This it's a lot of money at stake. You can't just go sign with anybody and, and, and have them manage your money and take your shit. So I went with some guys who I had a relationship with who I knew. He might have got offended by that, bro. But I didn't give a damn. I don't regret it. What I regret, cool, what I regret, I'm going to tell you what I regret. And I'm going to save some of this for the for the next segment. I regret not leaving school early because I was projected as a high pick my junior year as well. But I let Pete Carroll convince me to stay for my senior year so we can go on a run to try to get to a BCS Bowl. But I ain't going to touch on that too much on, on this on this show tonight, I'll save it for the next one. But just know, I was duped. I was, I was uh, bamboozled. Run Good amok. Good week, yeah. Good week. Yeah, he got me. He convinced me to stay. I should have left. But I stayed. He weighed out the pros and the cons. I liked the pros at the time. But. Hey, you were young, influential. I was young and I didn't have I didn't have the right father figure in my life who was going to stand by with me and challenge those types of things that I dealt with with Pete Carroll. See, had I had a father figure that was instrumental, he would have pushed back on that. Like, what do you mean? Like, nah. If my son it's projected at this. We're going to go ahead and entertain that. But see, here's the thing, though. Here's the dark horse. He would have bad mouthed you. He would bad, bad mouth you your junior year, bro. He, he, he wouldn't would have been able to. He, would, he, he wouldn't have been able to. He only had one year with me. That's not enough. Okay. 
only that I would have only had played one year with him. You get what I'm saying? So that wouldn't have been an, enough for him to say nothing. Like you only been with this kid for a season. You don't know. He, he don't know everything, but he got that extra year out of me. He was able to gather more. Hey man, that, that, that's that's hard to hear, man. I, I hate to hear that, man. And uh, the thing about it is, man, you are one out of probably thousands just that has experienced this on a collegiate level. And back when you were playing, these kids now got options now. If they want to leave, they can hit the portal. There's no guarantees in the portal that you're going to get picked up because there's a lot of kids that went in the, the portal and went bellied up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at least they have an option as opposed to what you guys had, which was nothing. You were stuck. Nothing. Stuck. Unless you wanted to sit out for like a year or two. Like if you transferred in conference, I think that was like a two-year like sit-out period. And then if it was out of conference, you had to sit out one year. Yeah, and uh you know, I know I know I know several guys that play college football, man, and this is from my from my point of view, I always make a um I always I, I always see I see something in all of you guys. And even myself, even though, you know, I didn't play college, I played semi pro, but um the great athletes, collegiate you guys got this, it's not arrogance. You just got that swag. All of you guys got a certain, when you're a dog, you got a certain swag. That doesn't have nothing to do, do with uh, being arrogant or flamboyant. I mean, dude, you it's confidence. Right. I haven't met a dude. Now, some of them, some people I've met, and I'm, this doesn't pertain to you, but some I've met who just, who just narcissists, one guy told me, yeah, I was the number one player, da, 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 da. but you didn't go to the league. Right. I took my leg up. Da, da, da. Yeah, but you didn't go to the league, bro. Your right. resume is short. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of guys I know to play at a high level on TV. But, you know, a lot of guys held themselves back or whatever, whatever, or, 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 or messed their chances up. But, at least you got that opportunity, bro. I mean, I did. I was that, blessed enough to get that opportunity, man. And uh, you know, it didn't it didn't go the way I wanted it to go, but it's okay. You know, I it was a great experience, and uh, I wouldn't change it for nothing in the world. Have you ever considered coaching? I don't have the patience, man. Honest answer. I don't, I don't have the patience. Uh, nice answer. I don't have the time to give. And it's, you know, being a football player Grueling. as well as being a football coach, man, it's – Grueling, yeah. It's, it's, it, it requires a lot of time, a lot of effort. And you can't – that football is one sport I know that you can't do half-ass. It's, it's either you all in or you all out. It ain't no in-between. It ain't no I'm in the middle. I'm straddling the fence. It's either you all in or you all out. Those who are all in have long, successful careers. Those who straddle the fence and, and do it for the wrong reasons, for monetary gain, careers don't last long, man. So one thing I would say to the youngsters out there, man, if you're out here playing ball, play ball for the right reasons. Play ball for the, for the love and the passion and the unity and the togetherness and the cohesion you have with your teammates. Don't do it for, for money because if you're doing it for those reasons alone, it's not gonna last. It's not gonna last. Only yeah, only if you notice, only it seems like when you you see the big contracts being handed out, there's only one or two guys on that team, maybe five max probably to yeah. get to get those big deals. You That's know what I'm saying? Sure. And a lot of people are under the impression that everybody who's on an NFL roster is millionaires. That's that's false. That's a misnomer. That's a that's a fallacy. It's only like you said, it's only about a handful of guys, four or five guys who's who's got million dollar contracts. The rest of them dudes, six figure high six figures, nevertheless, six figure contracts. You know, and they have to manage that money properly during the offseason 
because players don't get paid during the off season. So if you off for six months fucking around, you can go, you can, you can go into the season broke. I've seen it happen a lot of times. It happens all the time. Yeah, and, and then because of being blackballed, I know, you know, from, from from being your boy, like when you was playing, you played a, you played in the arena, you played over there before the arena, you played in for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, right? Right. Out there in Canada. So you had to go all the way up north. Yep. Opposite side of the country from where you're you're from to try to, you know, continue your professional endeavors as a player, all because this man behind me just threw so much shade on your name. I'm this not going to say he had an effect on. No, it's the long term effect. Yeah, it's yeah. The long the long term. Term. It's the, the long term. See, that's what people don't understand is the long term. See, 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 it's the, it's the domino effect. Right. Right. So right. had he not done what he did. Right. You wouldn't end up having to go do the route you went. Yep. You're right. And, and, and that's your story. But what about the other guys he did the same things to that had to go through that 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 grueling gauntlet? The long route. Just to, just to make a living. He ought yeah. to be ashamed of himself. I mean, my whole thing, and I speak to some of my former uh teammates, and it's just like, dude, if you're not gonna say nothing constructive, then don't say nothing at all. Just don't tell them nothing at all. They come talk to you. Look, I don't know. Look, this is my experience with the guy. You guys can see for yourself what you think about him when you interview him. But don't throw don't don't throw guys under the bus. That's gonna affect their long term livelihood, short term and long term livelihood. You know, like what, and not only that, affect it your costs family. You nothing. It costs you nothing to either not say nothing or to just say something constructive or positive about the player. That's it. It costs you nothing, Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll. Selfish, and, man. Well, see, see, he got put on blast, though. <laughs> Beast mode. But you know what? Sometimes less is best. He was just so subtle when he said, I, I don't fuck with Pete. Next question. Yeah. That was hood. That was gangster. Like, Next. He's not even worth my energy. His name is not even worth subject matter. Yeah, everybody look at this man like he's just the the ultimate savior of college football when he came to SC and did the things that he did. He didn't you play know. that one down, Green. You think he, he had Reggie Bush and Linda White, Matt Liner, uh Steve Smith, he had a bunch of talent, man. He did. He was he loaded. My, 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 my Luga, he had Palomalu, Ray Maluga, Palomalu. I mean, on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. I mean, he inherited. He, he inherited Troy Palomalu. Let's keep it real. Troy. Troy came in with me. We just we the same uh, class. We the same class. Wow. Yeah, he, he inherited uh, Troy Palomalu. That was his darling. Just like Russell Wilson was his darling with, with the Seahawks. Troy was his darling with SC. Troy can do no wrong. And Troy was a beast. He was an All-American, a, a Hall of Fame safety. But Pete, uh, Pete took care of, of Troy. What about Mays? Taylor Mays, I don't know too much about the Taylor Mays situation. I'll leave that for the other guest who's coming on. He can he can dive deeper into that and give you more uh, more clarity and transparency about that situation. I don't know enough. Yeah, see, see, I'm on the East Coast, and I'm over here at their USC, uh, University of South Carolina. I'm about 15 minutes away, and they think that that is. You know, it's SEC, it's big time football, but they've been trash since probably the conception, since George Rogers. So they really don't know, you know, 
the, the, the adverse effects of, of, of a winning program. But um, to, to, to people here, they're, you know, they're everything. But on the West Coast, where you're at, where, where, where I'm from, you guys are the upper echelon, you know. I mean, it's not the SEC; it's the Pac-12. But Pac-12 football is big time football, and and they're on a on a, they're on a ride. So, I mean, and they yeah. got the best. They seem like they produce the best quarterbacks ever. I don't know. It's just the Pac-12 is just like a quarterback factory. Yeah, West Coast, man. Yeah. And I uh, that interview with Marshawn with Shannon Sharp, he gave he he gave Aaron Rodgers his roses, and that story he told about Aaron Rodgers that was really uh. That was real noble of, of him to do what he did, especially with that dude being a freshman. And I thinking about my son being a freshman right now. It's like, you know, freshmen don't get that type of treatment, man. Um, nah, unless you a dog. I mean, shoot. If you playing college football, you a dog. But I mean, you got to be that dog, though. I get what you're saying. Yeah, you, everybody. If you come see, in it's as only three percent. No, but uh, it's only three percent of high school players to get to go on to play collegiate ball on any level. Yeah, that's insane. 3%. That's I, low. I did the research. That's, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really – and then now with this uh, transfer portal, football as we know it is about to be obsolete because check this out. They want to go in the portal and get grown men that's ready to play right now that they, they don't have to develop – a groom. Right. Where does that leave the high school kids just coming? In a bad situation. They're going to have to be mutants to, to even get on the field. You know. What you thinking about, man? I'm um, just taking in this conversation. I think it was very uh, insightful for some who's viewing. You're over here reflecting. That's what you're doing. You're going playing playing things back in your mind, huh? Yeah, I can't wait to dive into the other stuff that I want to talk about. I'm, I want to save some. Yeah, man, get on your boy too, man, because he, he, you know, what I'm saying he's yeah. not bigger than the program. I'm gonna let him know. Who, uh, uh, you know, FC play. They play the night game tomorrow. Who, who, who you guys got? Uh, Arizona. Blowout. What do you think about Caleb uh, saying that he might stay for a senior year? He'll make more money with, with, with his NIL deal than 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 in the league anyway. Yeah, that's huh? true though. That's true. Yeah. If you you got to think about it. If he's getting two point eight right now, that mean they they would have to re up the the next year's uh, NIL, which would probably be another two point eight or even more. He went to Heisman again. No, he's going he's going he's going eight ten mil. Yeah, but he can do he can make that without even having to play one down in the NFL. Bet. You know he said he, he said he'll play for the Giants, the Cowboys, the Vikings. It was Forty Niners. Forty Niners. I think that's disrespectful. What? The Forty Niners. So what are you saying? Like he just like he just that much better than uh, Purdy? Get out of here. He is not better than Brock Purdy. No, he is not. That's not even anything to contemplate or think about, bro. Caleb Williams right now is not better than Brock Purdy. If you put Caleb Williams right now on the San Francisco 49ers, they would tear his ass up. Yet to be seen. But I get what you're saying coming in as a, as a rookie. As a rookie? Come on, yeah. man. That's all yeah. I'm saying. I'm not yeah. saying he's not going to develop to be – a great quarterback in the NFL. I'm saying right now, right off the bat, we need to pump our brakes. People need to pump their brakes. He's the Patrick Mahomes of college football. He's not Patrick Mahomes. You get yeah. what I'm saying? You're right. You're right. College and pros is night and he's, day. He from he's from the D.C. area. He's from the D.C. area. So I wish my commanders can get him, but uh, he's we don't, we don't have we don't have. We don't have the draft capital. Hey, shout out to Caleb Williams, man. He's a Trojan. You know, so of course I'm I'm a support him, but for him to say 49ers, that was kind of like, damn, bro. What you trying to say about Purdy? So could, are, are, could, 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 he, could he put Dak on the bench? Dak stinks to me, man. 
No, he couldn't put Dak on the bench. Not as a rookie. But he can put out those other quarterbacks from the Giants, Jones, oh, yeah. get him out of here. Jets, too. Wilson. Out of here. You know? He can't stink it up no more than them. Well, one thing he don't have to worry about is Pete Carroll throwing no shade on him. That's what he doesn't have to worry about. <laughs> because he, hey, guy. he got the around. hardware, the accolades, and the money. Yep. Yep. Who would, hey, NIL, if you would have NIL, what, what you think you would have been getting? You tell what me, you man. I've show, I showed you some clips, man. You tell me what people would have thought. Let me see. 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 Uh, Based see, on man. all the material I done sent you, what you think I would have got? Uh, let me see, man. Uh, We're going to see. We're going to see. And Palmer stands on a quick drop, goes to Kareem Kelly. He's at midfield. It'll be another right, first down. Right. You, uh, well, that's one play. You got to show. You got to show that 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 fifty yarder. I know. I know. I got. I got. Man. I got. I got. I got to go. It's the running man. back. And Palmer stands on a quick drop, goes to Kareem one, Kelly. Man. He's at midfield. Same one, my bad, my bad, my bad. I, I was um, showing you shit. I was catching bombs, bro. You, 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 you throw it. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it, man. I, I, I got it, bro. I just, I got. It. I, I got it, man. I just got a. Uh, UCLA digging the archives, man. Rushing defense and the Trojans have been running the ball well. That's probably their most improved part of their game. Up, uh, over there, looking look like a Mario Miller. You had two touchdowns and. Yeah, <laughs> out route. But um, yeah, yeah but um. You got man. Here's a, here's a great thing about it, man. Uh, and I'm 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 leave it like this. You got an experienced dude that nobody, average man would never ever get the experience. Myself, a lot of people, millions of people, right? National TV. And then dog, you was playing during the top, Keith Keith Jackson commentating. Yeah. That dude is legendary, bro. Oh, for sure. I did an interview with him. Like that, he was, he was awesome. Keith Jackson, his, rest in his peace. voice is just uh, his voice is just impeccable. Man, I mean, he's up there with the John Maddens, bro, of commentary. For sure, for sure. The Pat Summerall's. Pat Pat Summerall's, Howard Cosell. Look at that for little sure. monkey run. <laughs> I'm just listening. No, no, no. <laughs> Howard said, "Look at that little monkey run." Hey, Howard, how, hey, Howard Cosell was up there faded, man. He was, he was up there talking about drunk as a skunk. Look at that little monkey run. Could you just imagine watching watching TV live during the football game and hearing, hearing the commentator say that? Back then, yeah, I'm sure. It was, <laughs> it was the norm for them. Oh, my gosh. Like that. Yeah. Wasn't no cancer uh, culture back then. What would you have to say about that if he, he referred to you as a monkey at the end of the game? <laughs> what would you, you would you approach him? We got to have a conversation, Mister Cosell. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! What if he, he, he reached into his he reached into his blazer and pull out a banana? <laughs> hey, you gonna you gonna take off on him? Shut that shit up, shit! Oh my gosh! Yeah, man, but nah, we gonna uh, we gonna get out of here, man. And this was this was a dope interview, man, and great insight, man, from a a former Pete Carroll player, a former alumni of USC, and just just it's just a damn shame how he's done people. To be honest, but you all right, you all right, you still successful, bro. <laughs> Give it to you again. He can't stop nothing, bro. You know what I'm saying? What God got for you is only for you, bro. And that's it, and that's all. And for that, I'm ever grateful and blessed. And 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 whatever you do to people, always remember you will be judged. Yes. Facts. Karma's a mug. Facts. You know, you uh you want somebody to give you your roses, but you don't want them to be dead roses. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so it's all good though, man. But uh man, I appreciate you uh tuning in with us. To all the viewers, please like, comment, and subscribe. Kareem, I thank you, man. And uh we gonna we we this is this is part one of uh uh, 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 of a two, maybe even a three part, as soon as we get our boy in here with us. All For right, sure. y'all.